Hello and welcome to the Reviewing the Realms podcast, a science fiction and fantasy literature podcast. I'm your host, Zach, and today we'll be looking at a little bit of a shorter book, but one that I think still fits the purview of this podcast. The book is called The Collector, and it is by K.R. Alexander. Now, this book is not necessarily categorized in the science fiction and fantasy genre. It is actually categorized in the horror genre, but it's about witches and ghosts and that stuff all fits within the fantasy genre. So I'm going to talk about it. And it's also marketed at pretty young readers. It's, it's brought to us by Scholastic. It was published last year in 2018 and it is marketed at four through eighth grade. So a little younger than a lot of the other books that we've looked at so far. That being said, it's hard to find horror that is scary for younger readers. And The Collector is actually one of the few books that I've found that actually fits that curview pretty well. So let's jump into the plot. Our story follows a young girl named Josie, who is moving from Chicago to a small rural community with her mother and her younger sister. Josie and her family are moving uh, out to this small town to help their aging grandmother, and their mother lost a job fairly recently, so she's looking for work too. So they're going to the town, and Josie's complaining because she's moving to a new school, she's going to lose all of her friends, And to top it all off, her cell phone doesn't work. So it's basically the end of the world for this young girl. When they get to their grandmother's house, Grandma says that there are three rules that the girls need to follow if they're going to live in the house. One is that they can never leave their window open at night. Two is that they can't have dolls in the house. And three, they're never allowed to go into the woods by the house. Now, Josie and her little sister are a little freaked out by these rules, but they're like, well, you know, grandma's sick and old, so let's follow them to make her happy. So Josie goes to the new school, and she finds that she's not popular. People don't want to be her friend, be around her, because she's the city kid, and the city kid is kind of weird. So she eventually on her second day, meets up with this girl named Vanessa, who looks completely different than the other people around her, and actually seems to understand where Josie's coming from a little bit. And they kind of hit it off. So Vanessa invites Josie over to her house. And so Vanessa accepts, and they're walking to Vanessa's house from school when Josie realizes that the house that... Vanessa is taking her is in the exact woods that her grandmother told her about. A little bit of a cliffhanger there. So we're going to move on to the physical appearance of the book. So I've mentioned before that a book speaks to its reader first with its cover. And the collector really does a really nice job of this. It is paperback, um, but a little bit of a larger format. And it is thin so that the so that the binding is actually fairly strong that being said the cover of of the of the book is actually quite creepy even for somebody who actually likes horror quite a bit it depicts a doll a baby doll with long black hair and they emboss the eyes with the eyes and there are it looks like there's like some sort of stain on the cover but it was I purchased it like that, and so that makes the eyes and part of the face stick out. So it's embossed like that, and it just gives it a shiny look. Uh, The doll is really, really creepy. has these uh, black eyes with white dots in it. It just looks like you're staring into a void. The Collector, the title, is in a pretty creepy font. And yeah, so it really speaks to the reader right away. I am an educator by trade, and when I brought this book into the classroom, a lot of kids immediately wanted to read it because it just looked so creepy, so weird, and they were just like, I want to read that. So they definitely did a good job in terms of the marketing. As far as the chapters go, the book is only 217 pages long. So it really won't take you that long. Uh, The font is rather large. Again, this is marketed towards, you know, as young as fourth grade. So I read this in about 45 minutes. So it won't take you too long. The, The chapters range anywhere between 
10 and maybe 15 pages at the most. And a lot of them are even shorter than that, like two or three pages. So really won't take you too long. Won't take anybody too long, really. And it will uh, tickle that kind of scary vibe. So if you're looking for something a little scary for your younger reader, but not too scary, I do want to make that clear, not too scary, then The Collector is something that you should check out. K.R. Alexander is an author that I'm not very familiar with, but she, it is stated that, I believe it's a she, has written some other books, so I'll look into that and maybe do a review of something else she's written, because it says that her other books are for older readers, so we'll see that. Because The Collector is such a short book, uh, I thought it might be good to do a little bit of a what's new in terms of books segment. So I've selected three books in the science fiction and fantasy genre that I'm going to cover pretty quickly uh, as something that is coming out in the month of May that you can go to your local uh, bookstore or get on Amazon or on your Nook or Kindle and uh, read. So the first book that I'm going to cover is A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J. Moss. So Sarah Moss is somebody that I have really wanted to actually pick up and read her books for a while now, but it just hasn't happened yet. So maybe that's something that will come in upcoming episodes. But A Court of Frost and Starlight is the fourth book in the Court of Thorn and Roses series, and it follows the characters of Fairy and Rysand. Again, I haven't read this series, so but I I do know that her stuff is pretty popular. So if you are a fan of that, there is a new book by Sarah J. Moss in your bookstore now. All right, so the next book I have here is Electric Forest by Tanith Lee. This is a science fiction book. This book is about the futuristic world of indigo, and reproduction is controlled by the government, so classic sci-fi trope there. And every baby is guaranteed to be happy, healthy, and beautiful. Okay, so already I'm seeing uh, vibes similar to The Uglies by Scott Westerfield. However, mistakes are made, and one of the few that is born accidentally is the main character, which is Magdala Kled, and she is an outcast in her society because she grew up ugly. So I'm seeing some parallels to some other science fiction here. This seems like something that you may want to check out, uh, which in this book is called Electric Forest. And then the last book is another science fiction book. Uh, This is called The Cassandra Complex by Wendy Nickel. And, okay, so it follows uh, a character named Cass, I'm sure that's short for Cassandra, who is a 22nd century university student who has always believed that her parents were a bit stuck in the past. Like most young people, I would say. But on her 18th birthday, she learns exactly how true this is. Not only are her parents time travelers living in an era different than either was born in, but now, to ensure that history plays out as it's supposed to, she must travel to the year 1914 and live out her adult life. All right, instantly I'm just like, okay, that sounds really cool. Time travel is something that is not necessarily the best genre in the science fiction thing, but it always is intriguing. So if you like time travel uh, works, The Cassandra Complex by Wendy Nickel um, looks like something that you may want to read. And that brings us to the end of our podcast. If you want to reach the podcast and give us feedback, you can write us an email at reviewingtherealms at gmail.com. You can also follow the podcast on Instagram and Facebook at Reviewing the Realms. The Facebook page mostly just says when new episodes are out, so if you're a subscriber via iTunes or Google, that may not necessarily be super helpful, but if we get a little bit of a community going, we might have some conversations there. The Instagram is where it's really happening. I take pictures of all of the books that I'm going to be reviewing, and oftentimes I do record these episodes weeks in ahead, so you may see what's coming out a little bit before the rest of the world knows if you follow the Instagram. You can also follow me on Twitter at Realms Reviewing. You can also go to our blog, uh, just type in Reviewing the Realms on Google, and our WordPress blog will show up there. So, with that being said, I am Zach, and I am signing off for Reviewing the Realm.